Ready for Action, part two of my entire fragrance collection. And this time, this one's going to be a good one. Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition, where here on this channel, we just talk about scents, fragrances, perfumes, anything that's scent related. So if you're here for unconventionality, frivolity, madness, innuendo, dark humour, with a little bit of, with a pinch of, I don't know, a pinch of something. I'll let you comment down below. What do you think that little pinch of something could be that I possess? probably oh, syphilis so in this edition it's part two so let's get into it my entire fragrance collection if you just clicked on go back to part one yes part one was the previous video just look in my playlist i'll put a little, little playlist for you on my page there so you can see where it is part three is going up in three days time part three is going to be a little bit of a miscellaneous from different brands that I just have made well I don't know this and it's going to be look let's just bring it back to normality let's just concentrate on part two first shall we so let's get into it first one is diamonds and emeralds by Elizabeth Taylor I haven't talked about this but I need to talk about it because let me tell you this is one of the best tuberose scents one of the best Tuberose spicy centric scents that is out there and is affordable and is beautiful. So watch out. If you want me to talk about this one more, let me know. So the next two are going to be from a brand called Igretta Perfumes, which is a, she's based in Canada and she does lovely, exquisite perfumes that are off the cuff really and their packaging is so kitsch and the two I have one is masquerade which I'll show you there this is a lovely ambery scent this is very potent the longer I've left this it's become very very potent and the other one is caught in the act this is a lovely orange blossom scent these two scents are just adorable i love the packaging on these so beautiful so kitsch a lovely retro scent that i love and adore so check out them Greta perfumes she's based on she has an etsy um account and they are really really lovely so the next one we're going to talk about is no we're going to put that one to the side because that's going to be in another video. Yeah, that's going to be in the next video. So the next two I'm going to talk about are from the house of Avon. And I do have a couple of Avon ones, but I'm going to talk about these two Avon ones because they're in a separate entity, Avon Far and Away. Now, I blind bought this at a steal at a price and I don't like it so this one is going to be decluttered this is not me at all it I thought it would be something in it is jarring I think it has a fruity note in it that I don't like so that's going to the side but this one I do love and this is Avon Far and Away Splendoria and this caught me by surprise because it is an oud based scent and I'm not a lover of oud but I think this is oud friendly beginner scent it's like it has white tea and this oud and it's oh it's blended beautifully on the skin it's marvelous far and away splendoria so let's talk about my next scent which is from the house of Aaron Terence Hughes who is a niche brand and excuse me if I'm a little bit nasally my allergies are quite strong at the moment <sighs> would have to be wouldn't it with the rain and then the, it dries and then you know you get my meaning so anyway so Aaron Terence Hughes I only have a small selection small bottles from him um, he is a perfumer self-taught that can be quite polarizing his scents are quite polarizing 
um, he has a specific DNA. The first one I'm going to talk about is Dirty Jasmine. This is a strong jasmine. This actually is a, a vibe of another scent I'm going to talk about in this video. So that's Dirty Jasmine. It's, yeah, it's a Dirty Jasmine. The next one is Jasmine Narcotique, which I don't think you can get any more. I actually love this scent. It is, it's a real narcotic jasmine scent. It has like this narcotic element in that Aaron Terence Hughes does. The other two that I have from him are, I can't read this. Ah, so this one I have Goddess. I believe this was gifted. Chantal Tiffany, who, where has Chantal been? She hasn't been on um, YouTube lately, but um, Chantal is a beautiful YouTube content creator from up north who I met. And she gifted me Goddess, which is beautiful. It's more of a wearable scent, but it's more of a white, it is like a white floral scent. It's, a, it's based on the note of gardenia, but this one is animalix. And this and one, can... lay this over any other scent, which kind of really projects and lifts and lasts forever. So those are the only real Aaron Terence Hughes scents that I have. The next one I have here is, well, actually, let's go to a house, shall we? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven fragrances from this house. Yes, you guessed it. Did you guess it right? The house of Guerlain. Now I'm going to start with this one, which I've never talked about. And it was hard to come by. And when I got it, well, I'll tell you. Yes, I've never talked about this scent, have I? This is... Guerlain. This is Mon Guerlain. But it's not the original. It's Mon Guerlain Essence. Yes. Essence. It has a note of... You guessed it. If you know me, frangipani. I love the note of frangipani. So I thought, hmm, I might like this one. Got it. Sprayed it. Beautiful. And it is a beautiful scent. The downside, it has no lasting power on my skin whatsoever. I get about two hours maximum. This is going to be decluttered because I can't wear a scent that just has maximum two hours on me. So that, along with my other scent there, is being decluttered. So yes, sorry, no frangipani. It's the, it's, the frangipani is beautiful, and it has that DNA of the Mongolian as well, which I've tried, and it's okay, and I wanted it. I wanted it, that frangipani, to really come out. But no, it didn't, sadly. It didn't last on my skin. So that's going. However, these next lot aren't. So the next one I have is Samsara. Little 30ml bottle. I would love to... This is the B bottle. So they have... I don't know if they've reformulated it since then. But it's now in, in that kind of Ace of Spades bottle. Which I think is rather generic. Because it's just like all the same bottle. There's no originality anymore, is there? I mean, at least these B bottles had some come off it's some classicness to them probably down to this isn't it that's why they de they stopped doing it in these this is a lovely sandalwood scent however i would have loved the previous formulation or the previous formulation before that this is beautiful but it it lasts about three to four hours on my skin so i am going to keep it um but it's not, it kind of, as it starts, if you remember that Samsara Guerlainade DNA, it, it kind of opens up and then this one kind of goes to the heart and the base really quickly and you're down to the base really quickly. So it's lovely. So that's Samsara. So if you've got an original, you keep it because you've got a good one. Now, Let's go to Shalimar, shall we? Yes, the original Shalimar. This is a newer version, but
but it's a beauty. It's amber, it's vanilla, it's slightly gasoline feel in the opening, but I love it. And then we have, I have a flanker of it, Shalimar Souffle Intense. This is, oh, this is benzoin on steroids. This is that benzoin note. Still has that amber girl in a DNA, slightly sweeter, and I absolutely love it. And actually, both of them last a long time on my skin. Next one, let's go to Black Perfecto, shall we? Yes, the original here. This is a flanker of La Petite Robe Noire. So I have this, and I also have this smaller Black Perfecto La Petite Robe Noire, um, the floral version. This has more rose, I feel, whereas this has slightly more tonka bean, licorice cherry kind of feel to it. This is Mod Rocker. This is Glam Mod Rocker. Um, I imagine, you know, a woman with short cropped bleached blonde hair and a black jacket getting on the bike wearing this. Or I could even see Christy Brinkley wearing this getting on the bike with Billy Joel. Yes, that kind of scent. Let's go to more of the classic ones. Mitsuko. This is a classic Shepra scent. This is not for everyone. It's not for the faint-hearted. Came out in 1912, did it? Or was it 1909? One of them. It's one of the oldest scents that you'll find. It is a classic Shepra scent. We also have my grandmother's signature scent, which I love, L'Air Bleu. This is slight melancholic. It's iris. It's powdery. It's a scent of a different era. Actually, I think this did come out in 1912. I think Mitsuko came out in 1909, I think. So, yeah, so this was pre-World pre War One when everyone was at peace just before an eruption started in Sarajevo. And then World War I started. Le Bleu is kind of that era, that Edwardian era, that, yeah, I could just imagine that Edwardian. I mean, my grandmother wore this in the 1930s and it still is fantastic. Probably in that era it was. But it's powdery, it's blue as the sun is just starting to set. Love it. It's my comfort in a bottle, actually, I would say that is. And then we also have, this is a newer version of Voldenry, Catherine Hepburn signature. This is a lovely soapy floral. Um, it's light, it's airy, reminds me of a spa. Beautiful, absolutely love that one. And then the only uh, Guerlain La Petite Note Robe Noir true flanker, as I call it, because La Petite and Robe Noir Black Perfecto is kind of like a flanker, a flat of a flanker. But this one I have is La Petite Robe Noir, the couture version. This is raspberry. This is a beautiful raspberry scent that I love and it lasts quite long on my skin. And finally, the last one, which I think I am going to declutter, is Chante d'Arome. This I've hardly ever worn. I've had this for about 15 years, I think, and I've put a little bit of a dent in, but that one is going to be decluttered. So that one is to the declutter pile. So that's all my girl lanes. Let's move on to one that I only have one so scent after of. After that huge sneezing fit, which lasted about six or seven sneezes, I am back. So let's talk about this one. This one is rarely talked about, sadly gone to heaven, discontinued. It's just beautiful and soapy and elegant and floral. It has a little bit of eternity DNA in it, I feel, but, and I haven't got DNA, I have DNA, I haven't got eternity. Thought about getting it, not sure, but this one I think is, is just stunning. It is beautiful if you love clean skin that's very just cosy sun moon and stars next one 
is the only J-Lo I have. I had another J-Lo and I decluttered it. But this one I have and this is J-Lo. Is it Miami Glow? I don't know. I'm going to keep this one because it's just sunshine in a bottle. And it's just... Yeah, this is Miami Glow. And this is... It doesn't last very long, but I'm going to keep that one. The next one I have is by um, Fragonard, and it's and it's called Billet Do, a Billet Do, which Billet Do is kind of like a letter you write to your loved one. And look at the bottle here. I've had this years. I got this in France. I bought this in the south of France, so this has a memory of when I was in the south of France. So, look, it's even starting to chip there. Do you know, that's how long I've had this bottle. Beautiful bottle, I'm not gonna part with it ever. Oh, God, allergies. So, the next two are the only ones I have from Burberry. And you know what they are? It is My Burberry Black, the original My Burberry Black. This is a strong mother, you know what. Yes, it is rose and peach and patchouli and it's strong. <sighs> yeah, you can choke people out with that one. And then the other one I have is my Burberry Black Elixir, which is just as strong. So um, it is a true elixir. So those are the only two that I have from Burberry. Yeah. So, the next house we're going to talk about is one of my beloveds. Let's start with my most, probably one of my most worn scents from this brand. Yes, it is Angel's Dust by Francesca Bianchi. And I have the oil as well. This paired with the oil. Now, you can't get the oil anymore. Oh. This body oil, and then you spray angel's dust on top. Wow. Oh, potent. It's absolutely potent. It, it has a little bit of pepper in there, but it's what I call my black swan scent, rising from the back of the stage, overtaking the show and dethroning that white swan this is what angel's dust is yes move over white swan the black swan is here she is she's it's got that it's got that dna of francesca bianchi but it's soft it's what i call a billowing pillow which is kind of like it's a pillow and then it just boom it hits you in the face that's Angel's Dust. So then we have my beloved Unspoken Musk, which is an immortal, herbaceous, oh gosh, yes, herbaceous dry flower, but it's got that musk DNA. It's all Francesca Bianchi perfumes have a DNA. All of them, they're strong. It's a contradiction, but they're soft. They wear you, you wear them. It's, it's, it's so strange because it's like you'll smell it and have this scent bubble completely enveloping you. But nobody will ever comment on, oh my God, it's choking the room out. That's what this kind, these kind of magic potions have. So that's Unspoken Mask. The next one, Lost in Heaven. This, now this is really potent it's narcotic florals but it has this spice in it which gives this animalic touch this is probably one that you cannot really oh if you overspray you are going to choke somebody out with this but with all of them you will but yeah it's it's a dirty heaven it's you're going to heaven but you're gonna yeah you're gonna experience every sexual position in heaven let's just say and then talking about sex sex and the sea neroli this is every sexual position on the beach yes 
This is Swas on Nothing More. This is, yes, you are going to love Sex and the Sea Neroli. I don't have the original Sex and the Sea, and I really want to get the original Sex and the Sea because it's got pineapple. It's got that animalic touch into it. So I will purchase it if I can. But Sex and the Sea Neroli, it reminds me of Corfu. It reminds me of Paleo Kostritska in a little bay, private. Yeah, you know, you're climbing down off that rock and you've, yeah, you've done it for, for womanhood, let me tell you. Yeah, so, and then, oh, we get, it gets even better. This is the sequel. This is the lover's tale. This is, this is unbridled passion in the bedroom when a storm is raging outside and you've come in off the beach and the sweat and the body odour and your tongue is just in and out of every crevice. Yes, I said it. That's lost in heaven. And more. You lost in heaven. God, I'm, oh, the lover's tale. God, see, they all have a magical quality about them. Francesca Bianchi puts this drama and talking about drama, I want to get Byzantine Amber because I know that's very, very much a theatrical scent. <laughs> I live for the theatre. But the lover's tale, yes, they will tell a, they will tell a tale, and it will make your eyelashes curl and more. Yes. Then the final one I have is Libertine Neroli, which is what I call a Neroli Sheepra, it's, you know, you're, you're somewhere in Capri, riding on the back of a Vespa with your Italian boyfriend, the anticipation, the wait, and you go into his mansion that opens up, and he's there with his white shirt, unbuttoned, crisp, your hand linking in onto that chest, with those red nails and at the end of the night you wake up and I tell you what his back is full of scratches this is what Liberty Neroli does to me yeah it's everything and more combined I just love them love all of my Francesca Bianchi scents they are very close to my heart and you can tell why so, moving on, we have, wow, it's from my next beloved house, which comes from Papillon. Salome, yes, I've talked about this. This is my DNA in the bottle. Look how much I have used. You know me, I love it. My next best one, I'm not going to talk about it a lot because you know I just love it. And if I talk about it, I could dedicate a whole video to it. The next one I love, Angelique, which is food for my soul. It really is. It has this Edwardian feel to it. It's, yeah, it's something mysterious about Angelique. I, f I feel this belongs in an Edwardian era like that film somewhere in time this is that scent in a bottle and you are somewhere in time you're transported to an era where things were at peace things were this what this is what this fragrance does it makes me feel at peace it makes me drop my shoulders and it makes me reflect angelique the next one if you want to feel like an egyptian god spell one two five my husband wears this as well. This, a friend of mine smelt this and she said, wow, she said, that smells like rich money and inexpensive, she said. And yeah, I mean, look at the juice in here. I love the juice. It just flickers in the light. It is spell 125. This is a silvery, this has a silvery feel to it. It's feathers that are floating down from the sky and it's just encompassing you and you're looking up. And again, it's quite a peaceful scent. Although it's strong, it has frankincense as well. It's everything and more, which I love. And the other scent, which I absolutely adore as well, is Hera. This is 
for a Gothic goddess. Although Hera is a Greek goddess, I feel this could easily fit. This this has quite two sides to it. It's sweet and innocent, but it's dark and it's nefarious as well. You can kind of play up or play down. This is what Hera does to me. It has a tiny bit of vibe of angel's dust as well. Only tiny bit. But that powderiness, that boudoir feel that this fragrance does, and it just encompasses a boudoir scented bedroom and it sets the scene it it's happy it's it's just beautiful and it's yeah i love papillon as a range and i still need to get a few more scents from papillon i still need to get bengal rouge and i still need to get Anubis. Those are the two that I'm after that I really want to get eventually. Um, I've toyed with Tobacco Rose but I'm not sure. I did sample it and I wasn't sure about it. Um, and Dryad. Yeah I do love Dryad as well. I love all of them probably except Tobacco Rose which kind of I thought I would love but I didn't like as much as I thought I would but the others I love with a passion. Let's move on to Frederick Mal. Let's move on to, I think, the Queen of Tuberose, Carnal Flower. This is austere. This is what I imagine Meryl Streep would wear in The Devil Wears Prada. Yeah, it's that kind of austere tuberose that just rises above. So let's talk about the next one, which is, I did have in my hand, this is a dark gothic rose. This is Portrait of a Lady. This is raspberry spiced pepper patchouli. Rose, a rose that will prick you. A moody, dark gothic rose. Beautiful. And I have an older edition here. So, wow, it's strong as... You would not think. And then I just have a small one of Musk Ravager, which I I don't think I'm going to buy a full size of this because it I have Shalimar and it kind of has that, has that Shalimar feel to it. But maybe if, maybe it's more modern. Um, it's not that. People say, oh, it's so animalic. I don't find it that animalic. Um, it's lovely. But I have better scents that perform, like Dior Addict, which is a similar vibe, um, Shalimar, which is a similar vibe. So that one I'm going to keep, but once it's gone, it's gone. So let's talk about the next one, which I only have one scent of, and that's January Scent Smolder Rose. This is, I did a video that I dedicated this rose to my mother-in-law who died. And this is the kind of scent that I imagine that she would have worn. This is a rose by the sea. I feel the, the, this is a rose that you would smell by the sea. This has like a sea-like note in it. Almost a little bit like womanity, but not as far, not as, not as, um, much as womanity is with that salty feel but this definitely has it has like a niche quality scent if that's what niche quality is i love this this is smolder rose so i love having that in my collection and the only one that i have from rogue perfumery is jasmine antique this is a real 80s powerhouse jasmine scent very strong very strong this is this is there with the most i'm going to do uh, actually i must do a video which is the most potent scents in my collection this is one of them yeah definitely then the next one i have only from one fragrance from the, this house from jean desprez is bala versailles this is Michael Jackson's, or was Michael Jackson's, and Elizabeth Taylor's signature. But this is, this is lovely. It's similar to Salome, but I do think Salome just edges out on it. Well done. 
well done, Liz, from um, Papillon for creating Salome. You know, this has the, the Belle of Versailles qualities, but it is a little bit better, in my opinion. But I still love it nonetheless. And then the next one I have, the only one I have from Monothem Fragrances, is called Tuberose, which is a lovely tuberose. I imagine Bette Davis wearing this. Because she did say, when they said, what scent are you wearing? Tuberose, she answered. And I think it was an Estee Lauder tuberose scent. But I just imagine her wearing this. This is quite a realistic tuberose. It's not very sweet at all. It's semi-sweet. And good lasting power, which is good. I have I have done a fair dent in this, believe it or not. Because I do about 10 or 12 sprays of it. The next two I have are from the house of Sisley, and they are this austere Eau de Soir Chypre, which is like carnal flower. It's one of those austere scents, but I have to be in a certain mood to wear this. This, I think, if I wore this, I would want to command an audience, and I would want to be, oh, she means business. <gasps> We've got to listen to her. If, you're in, if I was in front of a class teaching um, with a lot of people. I wouldn't wear this in a small room because this is a bold scent. But if I was in a big room, I would spray three sprays of this, that's all, maybe four, and then go. This is that austere sheep press scent of the galbanum, of the patchouli, of bergamot. Oh, it's, oh, I've got to keep smelling it. It's oak moss. It's just a beautiful and stunning. I would love to wear like a lovely suit with that. And then the next one, I would then dress down then for, not dress down, dress up for the evening. Soir d'Orient. However, I will only wear this in autumn and winter. This is what I call Christmas in a bottle. I remember going on a training course once when I worked for Clarins some years ago and I wore this in the evening when we were going out for an evening meal and the girl said to me you smell like Christmas she said to me and it is it's like Christmas in a bottle it has rose it has oud but I feel it has more spices in and it really is a lovely warm Christmas scent so I'll only wear it now in autumn and winter Soir d'Orient which I do have matching body lotion for so Next one, we're going on to the house of Longcombe. So I have one, two, three, four, I have five fragrances from Longcombe. So the first one I'm going to talk about, yes, my Trezor Midnight Rose, which I've lost the top. This is a fruity rose. This, although it's rose, it has black currant in and it's, it's lovely. I used to wear, I had a bigger bottle of this and whenever I wore this, my husband went crazy. Crazy. He loved it. But I've kind of, I don't know, I like it. No, I do. I do. I love it a lot. Anyway, that's Midnight Rose. So enough of that one. Because, you know, I, I want to talk about a sentence I really love. I'm going to keep it because I really like it. The next one I do really love and I'll only wear it on a special occasion. La Vie est Belle. This is the absolute version this is a 40 mil bottle. They do it in a 40 or a 20 mil bottle. This is potent powerhouse. This is date night scent. I would only wear this on a date night. Beautiful, stunning, much better than the original. And I think the best La Vie Belle that I've experienced. The next one I love and not many people talk about is Magie Noire. This is... This has kind of dark bitter chocolate you know Bourneville I feel like it has dark bitter chocolate it's slightly gourmand but it's it's witchy it's dark it's deep it has raspberry it but it's yeah I'll only wear this wow I shall only wear this in autumn and winter this I have to be in the mood to wear for as well this God, you know what? I feel like wearing it now. But I'm not. I'm not. But I still love my black magic. 
And then the fourth, no, not the final one. The next one I have is Trezor, the original. Yeah. This is powdered peach cream puff. This is what this is. This, I love this. I had the older version, but I actually prefer the newer version. Now I've tried both of them. I thought I was going to love the older version. Some people love this, some people hate it. But this, this is a beauty. This is, you know, Isabella. This is Ingrid Bergman's daughter wearing this. This was kind of commissioned. This was commissioned for her. And it, yeah, 1990 when it came out, we were all wearing it then. We were all wearing it then. And then this final one I have is Hypnose. Long Come Fragrances all have really good staying power. Even the Midnight Rose it does. I find that with Long Come Fragrances. This is Midnight Rose. This is starting to go a little bit darker, I think, because of the vanilla in this. But it has this passion fruit in and I adore it and I love it. So the next one, we're going on to a dupe house, a clone house, a house that's inspired by fragrances. Let's go on to, yes, you know, I love this, this house, Amour Sense. Let's talk about Black Rose. This is meant to be Black Orchid by Tom Ford. This is probably my, I like it, but again, I have to be in a mood for it. It's probably my least favourite one that I like. I actually think I may declutter this because this is one I try to love Black Orchid and I thought I did and I got this and I thought oh this is really beautiful but as I was wearing it throughout the day it was starting to just slightly grate on me and I thought shall I keep it shan't I? I'm going to make an executive decision that is being decluttered so I have four decluttered scents there. So that is going. So I'm decluttering that one. But one, two, three, one, two, three, four. I have five more. One my husband nicked off me and wears. Yeah. So I have one, two, three, four left. This next one is called Instinct. And this, oh, it's so beautiful. It's a inspired scent of Montel Sensual Instinct. This has rose, I think, but it has lightness and darkness. You know me, I love scents that have lightness and darkness, and this has different qualities to it. This wears beautifully on the skin. I absolutely love it. The next one I have is Mesmeric Poison, which is a dupe of Hypnotic Poison. I think it's a very close dupe, but I think it's actually a lot sweeter. Because the original Hypnotic Poison opens up slightly bitter and then goes sweet. This goes to that sweetness straight away. But it's still lovely nonetheless, and it lasts a long, long time. Now, this next one is a fantastic dupe. Is Saint for Angel by Thierry Mugler. This is 99%, virtually the same. Lasts as much as long as the skin. Look at the juice in there. It, yeah, <laughs> you know, it rains over the original Moogler that is already out there now. Forget L'Oreal, Moogler, um, Angel of Today, buy this instead. Much cheaper, you'll thank me, honestly. Honestly, it's, and I'm an Angel Queen, you know I'm an Angel Queen, so I'll only wear the older Angel. And then finally, Ispahan, which is a dupe of Oud Ispahan by Dior, which I smelt and I loved. But again, like Saint, much better. It's, it's a lovely rose oud, probably one of the best rose ouds, the cheapest rose ouds that I own, with frankincense as well. Yeah, beautiful, and I have a hundred mils of that. Oh, love it, love it. Right, so let's go on to one, to a brand that I only have two cents of. 
two cents. Two perfumes of, and that is Ellie Saab. So the first one is Girl of Now Forever. This is a lovely raspberry based scent, which I like, but I hardly ever wear. It's too sweet on me. So that is going to be decluttered. So I've got five there that's decluttered now. But the one I'm not going to declutter that I'm going to keep is Ellie Saab Le Parfum Royale. This is what I said Fallon from Dynasty would wear if in the latest Dynasty now, riding a horse. Yeah, it's royalty. It's rose, it's patchouli. It's a fantastic longevity projection. I've used a fair bit of it. I'm going to keep that in my collection uh, for sure. So let's move on now to the house of Amouage. One, two, three, four. I have five. Five cents from Amouage. This one's a beauty. Memoir. This is black, dark gothicness. This is smokiness. This is Fenella Fielding from Carry On Screaming. Yes, it's all the drama. It is, it's, I'm going to say it's close to, it's a masterpiece. I think all of these amouages here are masterpieces. I do. And that's a sweeping statement. The next one, which I know scented snowdrops John loves, is Portrayal. This is speakeasy, 1920s jazz club, smoking a cigarette, wearing a jasmine-centric perfume. She's there with the Marcel Waves. Oh, yeah, she's there. She's there with the fishnet stockings. She's there with the cigarette holder. She's there enticing the men. Oh, she's Garbo. She's, she's Dietrich. She's everything and more, and I love her. Amouage portrayal. Look at it. Stunning. And it has this slight tobacco feel to it as well. Oh, beautiful. Amazing. The next one, much better, I think, than Chanel number five. That's a sweeping statement, but that's just my opinion. Amouage Gold. Oh, yes, I wore this the other night and this and I, I think I choked my husband out wearing this because it is civet and lily of the valley. It's it. It. It's not the same as Chanel Number no. 5, by no means. It has those same vibes, but I think it's much more better. It's the very first Amouage scent that was bought out in 1983, I do believe. So, yeah, if you love an animalic lily of the valley, this girl does, you'll love this. Believe me. And talking about animalics, now, I was quite surprised, really, because this next one, I remember Lulu talking about, and I thought... You really like that scent? You really love that? You really like that scent? Yes, she spoke about Amouage Figment, which is a very polarising scent and it has slight Eden feels to it. So I was quite surprised when Lulu spoke about it. But I bought it and I love this. This is a mermaid in a bottle. This is a mermaid. This is Lorelei luring the sailors to shore and then devouring them. This is her in a bottle, yeah. She is. And then you have the vampire in a bottle, yeah. Amouage Opus Number 9. This is Jasmine, a dirty, dirty Jasmine. Hey, I'm living for it. Strong AF. Beautiful, beautiful scent. One of my most strongest scents that I own and I would say, I tell you who um, influenced me to buy this, Thomas Ouch 110. Oh, yes, he did. My cat is now going to fall. I think, you know, when cats are just climbing into something, they've got everything and then they climb into a box. Yeah. But Amouage Opus Number 9. This, whenever I've worn this, Richard has always commented. And I say to him, look, it's Amourage Opus 9. I've worn this before. Yes, but every time I smell it on you, he says, it just, it's, it's not the same. It's like a new scent. 
I don't know where it gets that idea from. But Amarage Opus number nine, it really has that gothic vampire romanticism feel, the, that romantic feel about it. You know, your Mina looking out over Whitby Bay and there, there he arises from the sea. Dracula, oh, just bite me on my neck now. Just draw that blood. Yes, I'm living for it, living for it. I'm getting, actually, I'm getting a little bit carried away there. So Amouage Opus 9. So finally, I'm going to talk about my next final house, which is Lush. Let's talk about, and I'm a sucker for it, but it doesn't really smell like it. Well, it does a little bit. Frangipani by Lush. I like this, but I don't know if I really, really love it. So I think I'm going to actually... Oh, no, no, I haven't used a lot. I'm going to declutter this. Because it has more of a sweet... It has more of this almond feel. Oh, look at the ingredients. I feel there's a lang-ylang in there as well, maybe. It's not as frangipani-centric it's not it's lovely but i would actually wear this more at christmas this has a christmas feel to it so i think yeah i'm going to make an executive decision i'm decluttering frangipani one two three four five six there the next one i'm not going to declutter is rose jam because i think this might be discontinued this is ooh, this is a sweet rose jam. This is rose jam ladled with sugar. And, you know, is it the pectin? Is it in the jam? Or the, I'm no, by no means a cook, you know. Um, I only bought my house because the kitchen came with it, you know. But, no, I only bought, is that what they say? The kitchen is there. But when I look at, when I look at a house or something, the first place I go to is the bathroom below the kitchen. But anyway, yes. Rose jam, it's ladled with sugar, jam and rose. And it's not like Turkish delight rose. It's just rose with loads of sugar on. Next one, love. This is so happy. This is a lovely bergamot citric scent that lasts really well on the skin. And I've done quite a dent in this. So I love that. It's so uplifting, so summery. The next one I have, which was gifted to me by um, another fragrant fellow person here, that is, oh, Barry. Barry, yes, Barry. 29 High Street. This is meant to be everything that Lush, when you walk into a Lush store, I'm going to keep this because I love it so much. It's strong as anything. This has... Oh, I can't read this. Jasmine. Obviously, it's going to have jasmine, ylang ylang. Maybe rose, I think it has in it. Sandalwood. Yeah, it's... I love this. And this is a discontinued scent that I will keep. And I have another vampire bottle, as I call it. Lust. This one I've had for years. Look how dark it is. This is oh, just pure jasmine. Pure Jasmine. This is another strong AF in my collection. And finally, the last one I have, which is my most favourite fragrance from Lush, is 1000 Kisses Deep. It's myrrh, osmanthus, mandarin. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. I get lots of compliments from wearing this. People say, oh, that scent's different. Never worn that before. Or I get wafts of it coming down, you know, from the hallway or in the room. Yep, it's 1,000 kisses deep, darling. I'm the one that smells good. So, I have come to an end of part two. So, Frangipani by Lush. Chant d'Arome by Guerlain. Black Rose from Amor Scents, which is from Black Orchid, a dupe. Girl of Now Forever, Mongelan Lessons, which is the Frangipani, and Avon Far and Away, the original one. Not a, uh, an original, a reformulated version. I'm going to declutter those. So that I come to the end of part two. So if you're still here and you're watching, you've made it to the end. It's OK. You don't need to take a diazepam just yet, because my voice has been boring you probably. Part three is coming. 
Until then, my mouth is dry as the bottom of a bird's cage. I could say something a lot worse, but I won't. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, thank you for all your subscriptions. Thank you for watching. Part three. It's going to be a good one as well. I'm going to include actually in part three all my lotions and potions that I have as well. I don't have many, but I have about a dozen or so that I have to match my scent as well. And my bath and body work, which I talk about layering in part three of all my fragrance collection and all of my doer fragrances that I have as well. Until then, I'll see you in part three. Bye for now.